Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to today's drop-in session for uh, the uh, City of Bradford Metropolitan District Council um, uh, Daytime Activities Procurement for Adults with a Learning Disability. Um, this drop-in session um, has been, there's three of them that we've put in place, uh, and they are exactly what they say on the tin, actually. They're just an opportunity for anybody that wants to, to come along to ask any process-related questions. Nothing is off the table. If it's a question that we can't answer because it might be something to do with the technical service that you are offering or pricing related, that kind of thing, then we'll do one of two things. We'll either put a clarification question in out of the drop in session into um, the tender through EU supply, your tender, or you can do that as a provider. You can put that clarification question in, but anything process related, you can ask um, as you want to today. Um, so please do feel free if you've got any questions, uh, just to pop them either in the Q&A um, or you can pop your hand up uh, and we'll have a chat, whatever you want to do. So um, please do also feel free to use the chat functionality if you want to, to say hi. Um, if you'd rather stay anonymous, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, what we try and do with these sessions, we have 30 minutes set aside, um, but often they're a lot quicker than that. So we'll try and get through the questions um, and then we'll we'll not keep everybody here. We know time is super precious. So uh, we'll take as long as it takes, uh, but it will be a maximum of 30 minutes. What we also try to do just at these drop-in sessions is to have a quick look through the clarification questions and just see if there are any questions that have been asked already that relate to process that might be useful for us to update anyone that comes to this session uh, for as well. So whilst everybody's sort of settling in and deciding if they've got a question, um, we'll go through the clarifications because that may well answer a question that you've got. And then we'll see if there is any questions that anybody else wants to ask as well. If there isn't, don't worry. Um, and then just before we close, we'll reiterate the other ways that you can get in touch with Go for Growth outside of these drop-in sessions if you want to. So I think we'll crack on. Um, it's two minutes past now. So um, if you're still joining and you missed any of that, my name is Gillian Askew. I'm from Go for Growth and I'm joined again by my colleague, Lauren Siddons, who is also from Go for Growth. Morning, Lauren. Morning. Morning. Uh, we'll start by looking at the clarification questions. So they were updated um, according to your tender on the 25th of September 2023. I don't know if everybody's seen it, but there are five clarification questions in the log at the minute, uh, four of which have got some process elements related to them. So there was a question on the 21st of September about where to locate the pricing schedule that was mentioned in the pricing declaration statement and some clarity around whether that's a document that needs to be completed and submitted as part of the tender submission. And the answer that's come back on that from uh, City of Bradford Council is uh, that the pricing uh, schedule with the declaration statement refers to ITT part two document, section three for pricing. And what the council have said is that they require bidders to accept and sign the declaration as part of the ITT part two response document. So hopefully that helps people find the pricing uh, declaration statement and know that you need to sign it and submit it as part of the ITT part two response document. There was a question also that was raised around, um, is it possible to arrange site visits? Um, and the, the answer from the council was that providers may wish to make site visits to service delivery venues to familiarise themselves with premises and facilities. If so, they can be arranged directly with new choices by contacting one of the following numbers. And in the clarification log, there are a couple of telephone numbers. I won't read them out on here. Um, the option to make site visits will end, however, on the 18th of October, after which site visits will no longer be possible. And it is worth noting that a clarification answer goes on to say that staff at delivery venues have been advised not to answer questions related to the procurement process. Providers must put any questions that they have back to the commissioning team via the Your Tender Clarification Messaging Facility that's embedded in the Your Tender portal. Um, the third question that we wanted to cover this morning uh, was uh, about we understand that if successful providers can only be awarded a maximum of four contracts, could you clarify if we can apply for more than four? And the response from Bradford Council was that bidders can apply for any number of lots. 
Um, within the completed ITT part two application, you are asked, however, to prioritize the lots that you apply for by preference. So you could apply for every single lot, the maximum award would be four, and you should prioritize what the order of preference is that you would um, want those lots to be uh, awarded in. And then the fourth question um, that we thought uh, we should cover today because it's process related is, uh, please could you confirm the evaluation criteria if it's based on quality and pricing? And if so, what are the percentages? And so the response from Bradford Council is that the evaluation criteria is based on quality and social value. And the percentages are given at 20.2 in the ITT part one document. That's where you can see the different weightings and scoring uh, for evaluation in there. But the um, evaluation criteria is based on quality and social value. So hopefully that helps. There is a fifth question in the clarification log, which is about TUPI, which is not process related. Uh, but if you do have any questions on TUPI, uh, then you can um, head over to the clarification log to, um, to see if that covers what your question might be. If you have other questions relating to process, obviously, please do feel free to um, either pop them in the Q&A or pop them in the chat if you have. Uh, if you've got them. Um, if not, um, we'll um, just quickly run over some of those uh, CQs again, and we'll explain the clarification process in a bit more detail, and then we'll talk about how you can get in touch with Go for Growth. So um, if there is anybody on the call that's got any questions, then please do feel free to uh, to pop those in the Q&A. Lauren, if, if you keep an eye on that Q&A, just let me know if there's anything there. Um, so we've covered Four clarification questions, one around where the pricing schedule is. So that's in ITT part two, section three for pricing. You do need to accept and sign the declaration um, as part of the ITT part two response document. It is possible to arrange site visits and the details of how to do that are in the clarification log. But site visits uh, will end as of the 18th of October. After that point, site visits will not be available um, to be booked. Um, bidders can apply for any number of lots. Um, you will only be awarded a maximum of four. So when you're applying for more than four lots or if you're applying for four lots, if you put them in the order of preference that you um, that you have on those lots and the evaluation criteria is based on quality and social value. And those percentages are given at 20.2 in the ITT part one document. So those are the four questions that we've covered off today from the clarification log. Um, the clarification log um, in ITT part one, it will have key dates around when, uh, how long clarification questions are open for. So please do refer to that document to find out what the key dates for the procurement process are. Contracting authorities will often try to answer clarifications if they do come in outside of the log, but there's no guarantee. They don't have to do that. So if you do have any questions, um, it is really important to try and get those in before the clarification question deadline. So if you make sure that you're familiar with all of the key dates in the in the procurement process, uh, then that will be helpful for you. Clarification questions will be answered on a one to many basis. So um, it's often useful to check the clarification log before you put a clarification question in because any questions that are asked by any providers, as long as they're not um, sensitive for any reason, then they will be answered to everybody. So it may well be that the question you have has already been posed and answered in the clarification log, and it can often be much quicker uh, to find it through there and then only ask the question if it hasn't been asked and answered before through the clarification process. That clarification process itself is within the Your Tender portal in the messaging facility. If you've got any problems finding that or driving it at all, um, Lauren is our portal guru. Um, she knows EU supply Your Tender inside out. So if you've got any problems in navigating the portal at all, please do get in touch um, with Lauren, especially. Uh, we can both help you, but Lauren is our absolute portal expert. So she can uh, she can definitely help you. I think we've just had a, a question pop up on the screen. Um, let's have a look. So
Um, okay, so it's about your um, relative experience. Okay, what there should be in the uh, procurement is um, there'll be a section of uh, how to how they're testing the relevant experience of the organisation. So it's the organisational experience as opposed to an individual's experience. Um, your informed experience needs to be okay. I don't know where that information came from. So the question is, I have experience relating to the requirements required and have references. However, as I've recently opened my own care company in May, I was informed experience needs to be attained at my own organization. Shouldn't experience mean more than the organization, organization that you worked for? Um, in the tender itself, it will have all of the um, uh, requirements of how the experience is being tested. So if you've set up your own care company, then your experience is the organisational experience. So um, depending on how it's being tested in the procurement, you should be able to draw on all of the experience that you've had up to press. Um, so if, um, if you've gained it before you've set up this company, then that should still be relevant um, to, depending on how the question has been asked in the tender, you should be able to give all of the experience. And the reason I say that is um, public procurement um, shouldn't be uh, discriminating against new startups. So even if you're a new business to the market, you should have the same opportunity to bid for and be successful in securing these contracts as any other organisation. And that's why the experience should be um, broad and you should have the ability to um, uh, give the experience that you have gained through whatever modes and mechanisms that you've gained it. Um, but if you um, wanted to um, chat about that specific thing in more detail, then it sort of segues into how Go for Growth is trying to support. So we have these drop-in sessions, but we do also have one-to-ones. Um, and if Lauren, if you could pop in the chat, how you uh, our bookable calendar. If you wanted to um, uh, chat about something in more detail, into things like. Um, recent applications have been rejected based on your experience, et cetera, then what we can actually do is work through that question, work through your experience and try and help you in a bit more detail that's relevant to you and your organisation. Often in these drop-in sessions, we talk very generally about everyone's experience. So um, if you want to um, book a one-to-one, -one, it's over Teams usually with either myself or with Lauren, um, you're more than welcome to do that and we can chat it through with you. Um, and when you say your recent application for this was rejected, um, I, we would probably just need to understand what that means in a little bit more detail. So this procurement is live um, uh, and 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 there is a current contract. So I'm guessing it was the, the previous procurement for this that you might be referencing to. But um, if you did want to have a chat with us about it, we can talk through uh, that in a little bit more detail if that's helpful. And when you go onto that bookable calendar that Lauren's put in the chat, you can choose either myself or Lauren from there and it will give you all of our availability. So you can just book a session that is uh, most useful to you. But fundamentally, in any procurement, um, you should be able to um, offer your experience in a number of ways um, so that any organisation, um, even if it's a new startup, has the opportunity to be able to demonstrate the experience that they've gained. So that's that's the 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 premise behind it. Have we got any other questions on there at the minute, Lauren? No, no further questions. Okay, I don't know if if what we've just talked to has helped at all answer those specific questions. If you do want more detail, like I said, do get in touch. Um, and so Go for Growth are here throughout this process um, until the tender actually closes. You can get in touch with us. So we have. Two more drop-in sessions next Monday at 9.30 and the following Monday, the 16th at 9.30. But right the way throughout, uh, you can book a one-to-one -one through that um, bookable calendar that Lauren's just put on screen. Um, and Lauren, if you just put our email addresses in the chat as well, you can email us, we can talk over the phone, What you know, whatever, whatever way you would like to get in touch with us, you can. And there's lots of useful information um, that's in our... Um, uh, email uh, on our website even as well which I'll also put on the chat now so um, there's lots of ways that you can access the support that's on offer from Go for Growth 
Uh, and of course, it's all free of charge. So please don't worry that there is any cost uh, to uh, anybody of utilising that support. What we um, don't do is write the bid for you, but we'll try and answer any questions that you've got about the processes and we'll try and help as much as we possibly can. I don't think we've got any more questions at the moment. Hopefully that's been a useful session. Um, please do feel free to come along to next Monday or the Monday after and to utilize um, either um, through the bookable calendar or our emails, or um, you can give us a, a, a call. Our mobile number's on our website as well. So lots of ways of getting um, in touch with the support. And I think the tender ready training session that we did um, a week last Friday, um, is now on EU supply as well. So that that slide deck has gone out to everybody uh, and the recording is live on the Go For Growth YouTube channel. And if you were a registered attendee to that, you would have already had both of those things. But if you couldn't make it and you wanted to see what we chatted through on that tender ready training, you can certainly do that. Um, in terms of CQC yeah. registration, um, I, I actually I'm not sure because um, it's a little bit outside of process in terms of um, our expertise. It's more technical. Um, it should tell you in the ITT documents if CQC registration is mandatory. Uh, but if it doesn't tell you in there, uh, my advice would be don't assume that therefore it isn't mandatory. It would be quite easy to, to send a clarification question. Uh, and what we can do is um, we'll send that clarification question to Bradford after this session to ask them if it is imperative to have CQC registration. It's likely um, uh, to come down to what service it is that you are providing, but um, it's not for us to answer that. We would ask Bradford Council to answer that through clarification. So thank you for the question. We'll uh, flow that through to Bradford Council. What that means is to get an answer to that question, keep an eye on the clarification log. When it's updated, you will get um, an email note through uh, the Your Tender portal to tell you that there's been an update. If how, for whatever reason you miss that, it's good practice to just pop into the portal to see if there's been any updates. Um, and again, if you struggle with any of that functionality, just give us a shout and we can walk you through it. But we'll ask that question to Bradford Council this morning and that will come out uh, via the clarification log as an answer. Hopefully that's helpful. So before I send us all on our way, is there any more for any more, any, any more questions anybody's got um, this morning or any questions that they would like pushing through to Bradford Council um, that we can do on your behalf? Do, do, do shout. Um, if not, we'll let everybody get back to their really busy mornings. And um, if you do need anything, like I've said um, already, you can get in touch with us a number of ways. You can use the bookable calendar to have a one-to-one -one discussion on anything. You can use our emails or you can pop back next Monday. You just need to go into Eventbrite and register uh, for the, uh, the drop-in session on Monday and next Monday as well. Um, so please do feel free to use those. If there's nothing more this morning, we'll um, we'll close it there and just say thank you to everybody for coming along. Um, if you need anything at all process related, do please feel free to shout. Have a great Monday, everybody, and thank you for joining us today.